distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It really is an honor for me to speak at this historic occasion, the launch of the Higher Education Innovation Fund. Uh, I was wanting to say to Esther, the private secretary, we must send a report to the president today to inform him about this. He loves this kind of thing and it's very special. And uh, when next he wants me to explain about NESFAS, I will say, fine, I'll brief you about NESFAS, <laughs> but I also want to tell you about this. <laughs> While uh, South Africa continues to battle the intractable challenge, which we have pointed out, uh, Mr. Gomera, of youth unemployment in general, Statistics South Africa has also picked up a recent trend in deepening unemployment amongst university graduates. You know, historically in South Africa, until not so long ago, by the way, graduate unemployment at any one point in time was always 6% mass or less. And also that 6%, none of them would stay for more than two years without finding a job. But with COVID, and this is what possibly the SSA is picking up. We've had some setbacks now. With companies folding and other opportunities, thus marking an increase in graduate unemployment. Various reviews were conducted on the state of our innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem in our post-school education and training system by, amongst others, the National Advisory Council on Innovation, which is one of the entities of the Department of Science and Innovation, as well as the Technology Innovation Agency, whose job is actually to fund startups and translating of, of IPs into commercial activities, as well as research done by the Department of Education and Trade. Combined, these reviews reveal that the challenges that characterize innovation and entrepreneurship in our post-school education sector include the following. Poor coordination across this innovation ecosystem, a weak culture of entrepreneurship and innovation, a lack of entrepreneurial support and networks at institutions of higher learning, students' limited exposure to entrepreneurial opportunities, mentoring and coaching, a small number of innovation leaders in timid colleges, inadequate skills, experience and education, low levels of capacity in our timid colleges, limited innovation through industry partnerships and challenges with any seed funding and incentives. This came out of this research. That's why amongst other things what we've done already is to work towards introducing both entrepreneurship programs in our achievement colleges as well as innovation pro pro programs to support innovation in our achievement colleges. Partly responding to this reality, which will come in handy in facilitating this program that we are launching today. These challenges have been more acute in our Tibet colleges and in our historically disadvantaged universities. The universities that are the apartheid were reserved for Black South Africa. We still have a huge challenge. Now, informed by these reviews that were conducted by Nanki Tia and our Department of Higher Education and Training, together with the United Nations Development, UNDP, we established the Higher Education Innovation Fund, which is what we are launching today. Now, we have a challenge in South Africa because then we should not say I'm now creating problems for you with our media. But our media really loves negative things. They just don't like positive things. Now that this election campaign, they ignore this and say, no, it's just the ANC government. Election year, which it isn't. This is a serious thing that will actually respond in creating opportunities for young people. And a link between our educational institutions, IPs, innovation, especially funding 
of those opportunities. When we are lucky that we have got on average media that is really not interested in things that take us forward in this country, with few exceptions perhaps. Because this, the Higher Education Innovation Fund, will target students who are aspiring student innovators and tech entrepreneurs emerging from Tibet colleges and universities. And this will be done through programs that support general entrepreneurship, ideation, generation of new ideas, and design thinking. Through the Higher Education Innovation Fund, we intend to plug the gaps in the existing suite of instruments and programs available to support innovation and tech entrepreneurship in the country as a whole. This is a historic step that we are taking as a country, as government, through these two departments working with the UND. It truly is historic. Now, this will be done through, amongst others, supporting business model development, validation and development of tech entrepreneurship, support commercialization, market access and intellectual property protection, and supporting scale-up and investor readiness. I meet many of them who say, Minister for ideas. Sometimes I don't know where to send them. I phone the teacher and say, DJ, what can you do? You know, this young man or young woman says, I've got an idea. Now, this is one area that, that we are opening for them. At a strategic level, and through the Higher Education Innovation Fund, we seek to achieve the following national outcomes. And this is very important. A well-coordinated, integrated, and responsive innovation entrepreneurship ecosystem to meet the needs of student innovators and tech entrepreneurship in pursuit of creating a culture of innovation in higher education. There are lots of good ideas. We need a way to capture them and translate them into new ideas, into intellectual property, into commercial activity. We also want to see a sufficiently funded and resourced innovation entrepreneurship ecosystem. By the way, this thing of an ecosystem is very critical. Because you can be having funding there, support for innovation there, but these things do not talk to each other. We want these things to talk to each other and have an ecosystem. We also want to see engaged stakeholders, partners and role players to support the ecosystem as well as trained and skilled student tech entrepreneurs capable of developing and commercializing competitive innovative products and able to establish and manage sustainable tech enterprises. By the way, the one key component of this ecosystem, teaching, must be our science policy that we intend to work with the Chinese to build some science parks, because science parks also must be centers of innovation and they must be part of this ecosystem. The process that led to the establishment of the Higher Education Innovation Fund was set in motion, I'm pleased to say this, by the signing of a memorandum of understanding between my department, DSI, and UNDP in November 2021. The signing of this MOU was intended to pursue cooperation and partnership in several areas. By the way, these areas include co-development of collaborative projects, including the development of evidence-based strategies for inclusive development and innovation for local economic development. I would really like to see university campuses and our Tibet College campuses to be anchor institutions where they are located. And part of being real anchor institutions, there must be places for excellence in entrepreneurship and innovation, responding both to local needs as well as to national needs. Also, this MOU caters for collaboration or aims to, to create conditions for collaboration 
on core problematic areas, incorporating cross-cutting issues of gender and youth participation in our economy. Focusing on effective, efficient, and transformative governance, climate resilience, and sustainably managed natural resources. This is critical as well. It isn't entrepreneurship, science, or innovation, unless also it deals with the issue of climate change mitigation. We also need lots of innovation on how we deal with climate change mitigation, amongst other things. Also, collaboration on, po on policy development with the Presidential em Employment Stimulus Program and assisting in the development of a monitoring and evaluation framework. Drawing on organizational networks and resources to further strengthen the partnership and collaborative activities. Support for the Department of Science and Innovation diplomacy framework within African countries through technical expertise as well as drawing on the networks and stakeholder relations of UNDP country offices. That's why you are a very important partner for us. Support for research, development, and innovation in the fields of ICT, CEO, digitization, and the new technologies uh, that we have in order to improve accessibility for all. The policy context for the creation of the Higher Education Innovation Fund is provided from our 2019 White Paper on Science, Technology, and Innovation, which also acknowledges the challenge of high youth unemployment in our country. Further to this, from our White Paper, we've got our decadal plan, 10 year plan on science, technology, and innovation, which commits my department to transformation and inclusion of the marginalized in terms of demographic, institutional, and geographic transformation on the national system of innovation. And it can't be entrepreneurship and innovation, and that's of course it places also women and the standard. and gender transformation. The two things are related bad, but they are not the same. Because we can place women, but if we don't also drive gender transformation, those women are not going to be able to do what we expect them to do. This is why innovation for inclusion is a theme that runs across all chapters of our decade plan. As it relates to the institutional arrangements and management of the Higher Education Innovation Fund, my department and the UNDP are the lead partners. Our entity, the trust, the, the TIA, the Technology Innovation Agency, recently joined the partnership as a co-funder and potential implementer of some programs. And I'm glad this is the TIA is part of this. Because it is these kinds of opportunities that TIA should at all times be looking for. We are working on extending the partnership to other organizations who will be co-funders. The DSI UNDP team is currently hard at work to refine an appropriate strategy, processes, protocols, and criteria around the Higher Education Innovation Fund. Equally important, in a couple of months, two calls for proposals will be publicized for interested parties with suitable programs and expertise to apply. So we are not only launching, we have a plan, and we will be having a call for proposals two months from now. That's the determination we have to ensure that this works. Our vision is to grow the Higher Education Innovation Fund to one billion rand, and through this launch, we are also inviting private sector companies and other funding institutions, some of whom are represented here today, and thanks for being here, to come on board and help us achieve this object. In conclusion, we are very excited by the establishment of the Higher Education Innovation Fund and value our partnership, as I have said, with the UNDP. The Higher Education Innovation Fund is the first for our post-school education and training system and for our country. <coughs> but also this fund has great potential to become a game changer in terms of the production of student innovators and tech entrepreneurs and by extension, helping us to address the interconnected challenges of skills development. 
and you then go. I thank you very much.